Since I just did time with a kiss stand Thinking of a plan to get quick bands Falling in deep with the quicksand Flag on my ass, no quick brand I was packing on the pound, got my weight up Had to beef in the streets, had to stay here Betty Crocker show me how to bake a cake, bro Doing that put everything I'll ever stake, bro Since I just did time with a kiss stand Thinking of a plan to get quick bands Falling in deep with the quicksand Flag on my ass, no quick brand I was packing on the pound, got my weight up Had to beef in the streets, had to stay here Betty Crocker show me how to bake a cake, bro when I put everything I'll ever stake, bro They don't love you no more 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 We are always together, like from waking up to go to sleep we roll to the gym together, we eat lunch together, wake up together, hey, breakfast together, everything together. Jake's going extra though. <laughs> like there's times where I would have to give up just because it's too hard, but he's going. And then one of us will pick up where I left off, like John will hop in from my spot to keep up with him. So it's like we always have each other's back, like no matter what. Predominant trait of Jake Paul the problem child, I would have to say his work ethic. I think, like, it don't matter what it is. No matter if he fucking juggling. Only real athletes can juggle. Do that. He gonna master it. He gonna put in the work so that he's the best. You know, we get up in the morning and uh, film study. Whether he sparred the day before, we'll go back and watch his sparring. Look at things we need to improve on. Things we need to fix. Little small things that will help us to, to do better next time. And then uh, we go into our first training session. Whether it's uh, Red Rock Canyon whether it's uh, you know, UNLV track, whether it's phase one, where we do a lot of our strength and conditioning and our sprints and things like that. But we get that work out of the day, we come home, eat, chill, relax. Um, you know, Jake, uh, he stays off his feet. I tell him to go up in his room and lay down, rest, relax, chill out, and then we get ready for our second uh, session of the day. Sometimes that session comes at two o'clock, sometimes it comes at five. It just depends if we're sparring, if we're doing mitt work, if we're doing brain work, and then we do a second session. And uh, you know, we, we pretty much do se uh, two sessions every single day except Sunday. So he'll get a day or two in between where he'll get to skip one session, depending on what was going on. But, um, you know, we're two times, three times a day with the film uh, every single day. So we're, we're, we're staying on it. He's fucking dedicated. We're out here running fucking middle of Red Rock, middle of the desert. You know what I'm saying? We're putting in that extra, extra work. We don't have to do that shit. We got a gym in the house like Nate Robinson like to brag about for us. But at the same time, it's like, we from the slums, we from the gutter. We know how to get it. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't spoon fed over here. We really dedicated to this shit. I think a lot of the shit I used to do was like for the camera. You stupid dummy, you stupid little dummy. I got money, now they love me. You a little stupid All right, let's go. dummy, little dummy, the playboy bunny. I'm a rapper and boxer now. You know, when you're a YouTuber, your goal when you wake up to make a video that day is to get as many views as possible. So are you gonna film some boring shit or are you gonna film some shit that people wanna actually see? That's where the antics come from or that's where the controversies come from or that's where the slip ups come from. It's trying to get the most amount of views. Uh, but I'm done with that. A lot of people really think this shit is a gimmick. They see his background, they see the funny videos, they see the, the kid fans, they see the, the, they see the childish side. And you know what? I just got one thing to let y'all know. We really doing some real grown man shit. And when you step into that ring, by yourself, Nate Robinson, you're gonna really have a wake up call, bro. And that's really all I gotta really tell him. It's gonna be a wake up call. Hey, I whip the pad like I can team. I just got me a beam. Used to ride his theme. Some hot as jalapeno. Bitch, I'm selling out of rain. They say he entertained. Nothing if you try to tame. Kick that thing off. We didn't kick the juggling gun. I do, man. I think, I'm, I think it's a game. This is what I do, baby. Making swishes. This is what I do, man. Jake Paul, you can't do that, Jake Paul. You can't do that either, bro. I'm gonna show you what's up. Uh, I wouldn't say the same caliber athlete because I don't think he can go play basketball in the NBA. I don't think he can play football in the NFL. Uh, I don't think he can go play Major League Baseball. And I can do all those things. Uh, so he's probably not the, the athlete, but I never underestimate any of my uh, my opponents. You know, I take them I take them seriously. Something that you know my father always and uh, told me about just uh, never take you know people for granted. Never uh, look past anybody. Uh, so you know we're really 
Uh, looking forward, I'm really looking forward to, you know, to the battle against Jake Paul. He's talking a lot of shit. Uh, and that's pretty cool, you know, you know, so uh, November 28th, there's going to be no more talking. I mean, I feel like, I feel like with Jake, it's a lot of, like, the, there's just the cameras is always on, so it's always just like a personality or just like being extra for the camera. So for me, I always wonder, like, okay, if there's no YouTube people around, how is he? Like, is he still that same way? Can he just be chill, just be relaxed? I think with Nate, regardless of if there's cameras all around us, if he's with his family, his friends, people he doesn't know, he's always the same, he's just a genuine person. Um, he cares a lot about people and, you know, about the people that's around him. Um, you know, and I, I think for Nate, I think that's the most, the, the biggest difference is just how genuine he is and um, just natural, you know? Now there's, there's all kinds of boxers and, uh, and you know, there's some that talk, there's some that don't. Everybody's different, but there's great boxers out there that some talk, some just stay humble, stay quiet. At the end of the day, I think, I think, um, I think most fighters, most professional fighters, they just do it to sell, sell tickets, uh, sell themselves, make make the fight more interesting. Um, but for the most part, uh, all professional uh, boxers that 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 I've experienced to. Uh, to be around or, or, or that I've known, including myself, we, we all come from a, from a humble background, you know, because we, we fight to feed our families and uh, we put in some hard, hard work in the gym. That, that just humbles us. You know, it's a humbling experience to be a boxer. Now, my dad installed, you know, being humble when I was very young, very early stage in my life, because he's always tell me when I was a kid, I could never, you know, get this out of my head. He was like, humble yourself before the Lord does. He was like, you don't want God to do it. You know, growing up, growing up in Oakland, California, really got me my toughness. They taught me how to be tough. They taught me my fierce side that I have. Uh, you know, it's like that night that never giving up, never backing down. I learned that from being in Oakland. Uh, yeah, man, I'm definitely an underdog. Uh, I've been an underdog all my life, and uh, I don't think I would have it any other way. Jake is what it is. He, I mean, he's one to know. He knows that he's in the dogfight, and that's what I want him to understand. I'm talking a lot of crap about he's knocking me out in the first round. I mean, it's good to know uh, that you know his mouth works. So we're gonna see if his hands can follow. You get hit in the face, what happens? You know, you gotta bounce back and you gotta swing back, hit, hit, hit that person that hit you more, harder. Just come ready, November 28th, man. You've been yapping a lot. You know, which is cool, you know, that's your job, that's your life, it's being behind the camera. Uh, me personally, I just don't do the fake shit, but, you know, uh, all the prank calls and all the funny, goofy shit you've been posting on the gram, man, it's uh, just understand that, I, I, that I've seen it all, heard it all, and, you know, we're gonna get to the bottom of it November 28th, bro, so, come ready. Thank you. What happened to you, Jake? Why are you at the hospital? Punched a hole through a car. He got better things to do, like uh, he got meetings with the FBI or some shit. Would have been a rumble right then and there. Probably would have broken the jaw. Wouldn't be no fight. L.A. baby, home of the real assholes and the fake tits. Let's fucking get it.